Well, this is the day that the Lord has made, and the Bible says we are to rejoice and be glad in it. Come on, let's give the Lord some praise. I was glad when it was said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Well, this is fifth Sunday, virtual Sunday. We're in our virtual sanctuary, and we've come to lift up the name of Jesus. So I need you to do me a favor. Like, share, comment. Let the world know that Locust Ridge is live, and we're getting ready to go into worship.
kindness of the Lord, I will remain confident in this. I will see the goodness of the Lord. Yes, I will. I will remain confident in this. I will see the goodness of the Lord. I will wait. I will wait on you. Thank you, God. I will trust in you. No matter what the circumstances look like, I will trust in you. I will wait on you. Come on, give God some praise right there. If you're willing to wait on him, if you know you set your hope on him, and you know that he is the everlasting God. Hallelujah. Well, it's giving time. It's giving time here at the local church, and we're excited about giving. The Lord says that he loves a cheerful giver, and we're getting ready to give. So come on, get those smart devices out. Do what you got to do. Let's give unto the Lord. Come on, recite our offering affirmation with me. We believe the Lord for jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, benefits, sales and commissions, settlements, estates and inheritance, interest and income, rebates and returns, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, finding money, bills paid off, debt demolished. We don't just give money, we give money with the mission, money with the mark, money with the purpose, money with the destiny, money with an assignment, money with a vision. I am a 2 Corinthians 9 and 8 believer, and God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that you always have an all-sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. Hallelujah, it's offering time.
Well, it's preaching time. It's preaching time. Get your Bibles out. Get your Bibles out. Mark chapter 9. Mark chapter 9, verse, uh, verses 25 through 29. Mark chapter 9, verses 25 through 29. Here's what the word of the Lord reads. When Jesus saw that the people came running together, he rebuked the foul spirit, saying unto him, Thou dumb and deaf spirit, I charge you, come out of him and enter no more into him. And the spirit cried and rent him sore and came out of him, and he was as one dead, and so much that many said, he is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up, and he arose. And when he was come in the house, his disciples asked him privately, why could not we cast him out? Here it is. And he said unto him, This kind can come forth by nothing but by prayer and fasting. This kind can come forth by nothing but prayer and fasting. I simply want to talk about it happened after prayer. I want to talk about it happened after prayer. My brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, in Mark chapter 9, Jesus takes three of his disciples, Peter, James, and John, to a mountain called Transfiguration. He's there to be in the presence and the power and the glory of God. Jesus has 12 disciples, but only these three, Peter, James, and John, were part of the inner circle. Jesus takes Peter, James, and John to the mountain in Mark chapter 9. Jesus takes only Peter, James, and John into the house of Jairus when his daughter needed to be healed in Mark chapter 5. Jesus takes only Peter, James, and John in the garden of Gethsemane when he's getting ready to be captured and crucified in Matthew 26. Jesus understands that only certain people can handle your moments of vulnerability. Everybody shouldn't be able to see every side of you because everybody cannot handle every side of you. Jesus, Jesus knew that, that there were moments when he had to be the God side, but then there was sides where he had to also be the human side. So Jesus takes Peter, James, and John to the mountain of transfiguration. There, he's in the presence of God. While on the mountain, his appearance changed from the inside out. Right before the eyes of these three brothers, his clothes shimmered, glistened, whitened, Whiter than any bleach could ever make them. While there, Jesus spoke to the ancestors. Elijah and Moses came into view. Jesus has deep conversation with them. Peter says to Jesus, Master, it's just good for us to be here. And here's the thing. While Jesus, Peter, James, and John were experiencing glory on the mountain, the other nine disciples were experiencing grief in the valley. There comes on the scene a distraught father who had brought his demonized, dumb, and deaf son to the disciples to be healed. Get, get this, the other nine wasn't invited to the mountain but there was still an important job for them to do right where they were in the valley. The other nine wasn't the elite disciples. The other nine was not the VIP disciples. The other nine were not invited to the mountain to see the transfiguration of Jesus in his radiant glory. The other nine had a closed door. They could only go so far. They had to stay in the valley, but I want to suggest that they still had an important job right there in the valley. And I want to talk to the people that feel rejected. I want to talk to the people that feel overlooked. 
Ne never feel insignificant just because you're not invited to certain platforms and certain rooms. You must understand that Jesus, you understand that just because, uh, child of God, you're not visible does not mean you're not valuable. I'm talking to the people because you always need somebody to verify you. You always need somebody to validate you. No, you are who God says that you are. Now, I've discovered that everybody is not called to a mountain ministry. Sometimes God will assign you to the valley ministry. And so after Jesus leaves a glorious place, he's met with a great problem. Can I warn somebody today? Don't get too comfortable on the mountain. Because one day you might have to come down. That, that, that's, that's child of God that's why you shouldn't laugh at people that's in the valley when you're on the mountain that's why you shouldn't judge people that's in the valley when you're on the mountain that's why you shouldn't talk about people that's in the valley when you're on the mountain because today you can be in the valley but tomorrow today you can be in the mountain but tomorrow you can be in the valley and so located in the valley is a man a father that has a son that's under attack He's under the attack of the devil, and he's been like this for many years. The attacks of this defenseless boy are recounted four times in this account. Convulsions and foaming of the mouth and seizures and outcries and locked jaw and body, bodily shakings are, are, are following this boy. Seizure symptoms. Mark's terminology is not as medically objective as Matthew's, but his description of the boy's plight and the father's distress is more graphic and empathetic. Uh, and and this, this, this desperate father brings his demonized death and dumb son uh, of the, of, to Jesus and they br first brings him to his disciples to heal them, but there's one problem, they could not deliver him. Jesus is on the mountain, the disciples are in the valley. Father brings his son to the disciples is in the valley, and they could not work it out. Jesus gets angry at his disciples and says, Oh, faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? He says, Bring the boy to me. Jesus is angry because he has already given the disciples power, but they were still unable to deliver the boy. Get, get this, the father brings the boy to the church, but the church has no power. <laughs> I think I ought to say that again. The man brings his son uh, to church, but the church has no power. And seemingly today, churches are functioning with no power. We have lights, we have cameras, but no action. I wish I had some help in here. Performances, but no power. Packed pews, but no power. The father says, I brought the boy to church. Couldn't nobody work it out. But there is hope in the text. The hope of the text is, church, that when all human hope is exhausted and aspirated, hope can be expected from Jesus. That is the somatic thesis of the lesson today that when all human hope is exhausted and aspirated, hope can be expected with Jesus. Let me pose the question Has there ever been a time in your life where you felt like help and hope was supposed to be in this place, but when you looked for it, it wasn't there? You tried to find hope in your family. They loved you, but they couldn't help you. You tried to find hope in the doctor. They had degrees. They had uh, medical backgrounds, but they couldn't heal you. You tried to find help in the bank, but they couldn't approve you. You tried secondary places, and they all failed you. But then you tried Jesus. Oh, I wish I had some help in here. Jesus uh, has says to his disciples, bring him to me. Thanks be to God that we can bring our problems to Jesus. 
If it's trouble in your home, you can bring it to Jesus. If it's trouble on your job, you can bring it to Jesus. If it's a rocky marriage, you can bring it to Jesus. If it's a contrary child, you can bring it to Jesus. Whatever the situation may be, the good news is we can bring it to Jesus. Maybe that's why the old choir would put it like this all in his hands. I put it all in his hand. He can handle it. That's a fact. No matter how great or small, he's the master of it all. Somebody, you got to know, you got to get your hands off of it. Your hands has been on that problem for too long. You've been trying to work it out on your own. But when you turn, when you learn how to do what the old folks said, turn it over to the Lord and find out that he'll work it out. This desperate father tried many options, but he has another move left. That's somebody's testimony. The devil thought when he attacked you, you were done. But the good news is you had another move left. I wish I had somebody there to type on the screen. I got another move left. I, I know I know when the devil thought he knocked you down, you were done, but you got another move left. I know when you were rejected, they thought it was it, but you got another move yet. When you learn how to move in the right direction, You'll always find opportunities for deliverance. And so they bring their son to Jesus. Jesus sees him. And Jesus sees what the spirit, what this evil demonic spirit is doing to the boy. He's making the boy fall on the ground, wallow around, foam at the mouth. And Jesus asks the question, Jesus says, how long has he been in this shape? The father says, since he was a child. The father does not say, since he was, he was born like this. He says, since he was a child. John chapter 9, there was a man who was blind, and John wanted us to know that he was born blind. Puts it in his description, but Mark does not say he was born blind. The father says this of a child which suggests that he has not always lived like this, that there was a certain time in his life that he lived a normal life. Perhaps that's your story. You haven't always had to deal with what you had to deal with right now. You've, ne you've not always struggled and suffered and had these issues, but out of nowhere, you become under attack. This father tells Jesus, this demon keeps throwing my son in the fire, trying to burn him up. Keeps trying to throw him in the water to drown him. And here's what happens. It's now that they cannot find solutions in the disciples, the man says, I want to try Jesus. I've heard about what he's done for others. He's in Mark chapter 2, preach Mason. In Mark chapter 2, he healed a man that was paralyzed in Simon's house. And they let the friend down and cut the roof off and let him down and Jesus healed him. There was a man that was in the temple that had a withered hand in Mark chapter 3. And Jesus stood in the temple and told him, stretch forth your hand. And he stretched forth his hand and he was here. There was Peter's mother-in-law who was sick of a fever and Jesus came in and laid hands on her. And she recovered. There's Mark chapter 5 that uh, there's, uh, there, uh, there's Jerry, uh, there, there, there is Jairus' daughter who is sick. He heals her. There is a man that's in the a temple in the graveyard crying and cutting himself. He heals him. And if Jesus can do all of that, then surely he can do it for me. But Jesus ultimately lets them know because the disciples ask a question. Why aren't we able to do this? Why, why aren't we able to heal them? Two things I want to share with you. Number one, Faith must be applied. Number one, number one, faith must be applied. Watch what he says. says. He says, Lord, if you will. He says, heal my son, if you will. Heal my son, the father. This father is tired, weary, 
war on the verge of getting up, giving up. And he says, if you can do anything, take pity on us and help us. The original Greek reads, help us and have compassion on us. Help is the object of the Father's request. But there's a problem. The problem of the text is, watch the text. The Father says, if you can. Not if you will, but if you can. Jesus said unto him, uh, if, if, if you only believe, he says all things are possible. Jesus says, but before I fix your problem, I first need to fix your perspective. Let me say that again. Jesus says that before I fix your problem, I need to fix your perspective. What do you mean if? Jesus says, I, I, I need to work with your faith because shouldn't be no ifs when you got faith. Jesus speaks to the man's faith because here it is. What is impossible to humans are possible for God. The sole bridge between frail humanity and the all-sufficiency of God is faith. That, that, that is the bridge between humanity and divinity. It is faith. Which suggests, church, that our level of miracles are predicated on the capacity that our faith can hold. Some people can't handle big miracles because they don't have big faith. <laughs> but I serve a God that can do anything. I, I said, that's why my prayer requests to God are large. That's why my, my prayer requests are crazy to some people because I believe if I serve a God that's large, then he can handle my large prayer list. After Jesus works on the man's faith, Jesus rebukes the foul spirit, says thou dumb and deaf spirit, Jesus, I charge you, come out of him and enter into him no more. The spirit cried and rent him sore and come out of him. And the text says that he was like one that was dead. In so much that everybody around him said, he's dead. Well, the evil spirit left the boy. The boy fell down and the crowd pronounced the boy dead. But Jesus, let the church shout, but Jesus. But, but Jesus went and took the boy by the hand, lifted him up, and the boy arose. I, I like this because the crowd gave the boy the benediction, but Jesus gave him a new beginning. Y'all don't know when to shout. I said the crowd gave the boy a benediction, but Christ gave him a new beginning. Thank God that we serve a God of conjunctions. Conjunctions join things together. Here's what I like about a conjunction. It does not matter what's on the left side of the conjunction. What matters is what's on the right side. Here, here's some conjunctions. If you're broke, but my God shall supply. I wish I had some help in here. All of my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. If you're sick, but he was wounded for my transgressions. He was bruised for my iniquity the chastisement of my peace was upon his shoulders and with his stripes I'm healed if you're crying weeping may endure for a night but joy comes in the morning tell somebody it ain't over until God says it's over I wish I had about five people that can tell somebody I thank God for every conjunction in my life I could have been dead I should have been dead I would have been dead but thank God that he'll put a butt in your life but God we Hey, 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 hey. I thank God for conjunctions in my life. Faith must be applied. But here's the second thing, church. Fasting unleashes supernatural abilities. Fasting unleashes supernatural abilities. Watch what the text says. Verse number 28. And when he was coming to the house, his disciples asked him privately, 
why could we not cast him out? Jesus said unto him, this kind of power, this kind of miracles come by nothing but prayer and fasting. They're, they're, th these disciples, they do all they know to do. They've already been empowered by Jesus, but yet they could not cast this demon out. Jesus says to them, this comes forth by nothing but prayer and fasting. My beloved, I'm done. My beloved, as we're, we've just ended our fast. My prayer for you is that you experience the fruits of your fasting. Whew. So my prayer that this fasting that you've just completed has not been in vain. Last week, last Sunday, I told you that when we get out of this fast, we want to see like we've never seen before. We want to hear clearly like we've never heard before. We want to walk like we've never walked. We want to be closer to Jesus. There's somebody that you are like this text. You want to know what's the remedy. You want to know what's the secret. It's prayer and fasting. There's going to be some people that you encounter that ask you, how is it that you're able to do that? How are you able to get that house or that car as bad as your credit is? How are you able to get that job when you weren't the most qualified? This comes by nothing but prayer and fasting. How was your family members saved? This comes by prayer and fasting. There are some people that this fast was not just a normal fast for you. It was critical. It was crucial. You had some stuff on the line that you needed to hear God for. This is my prayer that this fasting unleashes supernatural ability you'll be able to discern some stuff that you'll be able to see in the spirit like never before it happens after prayer I don't know what you're dealing with what your circumstance is but when people ask you how was it changed how, how, how was how was your life turned around how, how was your situation made better that you can tell them it happened after prayer. God bless you. Well, I pray that this message was a blessing to you. I pray that you will see the rewards of your sacrifice and the fruits of your fast that has taken place this week. Well, we want to extend Jesus Christ to you. You can come a few ways. You can come as a candidate for baptism. If you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you can come. Perhaps you won't to join our church and you're coming by Christian experience, you can come. If you're only in town for a while, you can come under watch care. If you just need a virtual church, a virtual pastor, we want to connect with you. This is your moment, your hour, your opportunity. We want to connect with you. There's a few ways you can do it. You can comment on the screen. You can text to join. You can email us. You can write us. You can call the office. You can send a pigeon if you want to by word. Do whatever you want to do. Do what needs to be done. We just want you to be connected to the family of faith. Well, God bless you. I pray that you have a wonderful week. I pray that your week be filled with peace and prosperity. Let me bless you. Now let the love of God, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, may it rest, rule, and abide with us henceforth, now and forever. And all of God's children said, Amen. Amen. Go in peace.